Okay, Guitar Geeks, today's gonna be a little controversial, maybe a lot controversial. We're talking about luthiers that make Martin guitars better than Martin guitars, specifically bluegrass dreadnoughts that can peel paint, knock your socks off, and make any banjo cower in fear. Hey, TAC family, welcome to episode 188 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show's all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. Do you ever feel like you just dabble with your guitar and that the pressure you put on yourself is sucking all the fun out of your journey? Well, today you're gonna be reminded that having direction instead of dabbling, having fun instead of frustration is the secret to unlocking your full Guitar Geek potential. In fact, you're gonna meet Phil B from Mesa, Arizona and see how this very thing played out in his own guitar journey. Plus, your weekly dose of acoustic news contains a ton of new music, the funniest recipe for Guitar Geek success, and a guitar that has literally been on a whirlwind tour. Yes, a, a literal whirlwind. Think, think Wizard of Oz. But first, let's wander into the world of bluegrass dreadnoughts and see who, in my opinion, makes Martin guitars better than Martin guitars. Before the controversy turns into a full-on frenzy, I do have to make a disclaimer. I love Martin guitars. Plain and simple, Martin Guitars has paved the way for every modern guitar maker in one way or another. But I do believe we're in the midst of another golden age of guitar making. And that being the case, we're seeing guitar makers take what Martin has done and push it to new and exciting levels, which is why this list exists in the first place. I've got six guitar makers that I believe are making Martins better than Martin guitars. So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna share with you the guitar maker and where they're located, and we're gonna learn a little bit about the philosophy of that guitar maker. And then we're gonna look at a specific model. The model, in my opinion, that made me believe they make Martin dreadnoughts better than Martin. With that being said, let's get started. Coming in at number six is Pre-War Guitar Company out of Hills Hillsborough, North Carolina. These guitars are quite simply amazing. And this actually goes back to a couple episodes ago when we talked about new vintage guitars. Anybody who makes fretted instruments are looking for the sound of the golden age of, of instruments, and that's really what these things are. This is what everything is measured to. The, the window of guitars that we're inspired by is a very narrow window. It's guitars that were built from 1934 to 1941. A guitar that was built in 1937 structurally is very different from a guitar that was built in 1944. They're loud, they're very present, they have a robust tone. And that little window of guitars and the way that they were constructed, there's magic in there. I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to almost conjure that. Now the guitar that put pre-war guitar company on the map in my guitar geek brain is their HD model. Now I heard this model online first, then I heard it in person. And the video clip you're about to see is David Greer playing an HD model with Grenadillo back and sides at the Station Inn in Nashville. <laughs> The next guitar maker that makes Martin guitars better than Martin guitars is based out of Stanton, Virginia, and it's Huss and Dalton. Started by Jeff Huss and Mark Dalton, they quite simply make an amazing bluegrass dreadnought. Here's a little bit about how they started. But anyway, we started in 95, Jeff and I in, in a little shop in his um, backyard. Um, <clears throat> We only stayed there about a year, and it was only he and I about a year. And then we moved into a rented space, and we started to hire a few employees. And uh, 1999, we bought a building. In 2008, we bought a building uh, in the little town of Stanton, Virginia. So like Kim said, it's a total of 10 people there now. We build about a guitar a day. Um, five a week is basically what, what our production is, 250 a year. The Bluegrass Dreadnought model that made me believe that Huss and Dalton makes Martin guitars better than Martin guitars is the TDR. This is a traditional Dreadnought with rosewood back and sides, and the specific model you're about to hear is called the Pilgrim. It has an enlarged sound hole, aesthetically it's gorgeous, and tonally, wow. Just strap on your shoes because your socks will be knocked off if your shoes are not on your feet.
Now let's head down to Austin, Texas and visit Collings Guitars. Yes, Collings Guitars. From fit and finish to tone, these guitars have it all and their dreadnoughts blow me away. These guitars are precise, they're exact, and to me, that's all because of Bill Collings' original vision. Now, granted, Bill Collings has since passed, but I found this great video of him expressing his philosophy in terms of tops and guitar making in general. Here it is. What is a constant variable? It's pretty, it's fun to work with, but the most important thing is how you treat that wood, how you alter that to bring the guitar out of the wood. Wow. Where's your chisel? It's, it's not just going through the motion of construction. And every guitar you listen to and you adjust the, the thickness and you make your next guitar and you do it again and you make your next guitar and you do it again. And you go, oh, this is easy, we just make this. Oh, it doesn't work, you have to constantly adjust. The specific model that made me believe that a Callings Bluegrass Dreadnought is better than a newly made Martin Bluegrass Dreadnought is the D1AT. Yes, this is a, your typical D18 style Dreadnought guitar. Mahogany back and sides, Adirondack spruce top. This is part of Callings traditional series. And here's Chris Eldridge playing that very model. Now on to my friends from Lewiston, Maine, Bourgeois Guitars. Bourgeois Guitars, they make fantastic instruments and they really run the gamut. They make incredible modern fingerstyle guitars. They make incredible traditional fingerstyle guitars. They make incredible bluegrass dreadnoughts that can indeed peel paint. One model specifically that I'll mention here in a bit. But first, let's hear from Dana Bourgeois about how you can have all the right things, but if the recipe's not correct, the guitar simply won't sound that good. Here's Dana. Well, it all has to be properly executed. I mean, you can have a good design and pick fabulous wood and, and ruin the wood, you know, if it isn't well executed. It's, they're very, there's actually very little room for error in any part of the building of the guitar. If everything's gonna be right. There are two specific models that are awe-inspiring from Bourgeois Guitars that made me believe they make a Bluegrass Dreadnought better than Martin Guitars. Now, the first model is their Country Boy model, which is a mahogany-backed Adirondack spruce-topped Dreadnought. I happen to have one, so yes, I'm biased, but this guitar is dry, it's crispy, it's woody, and it has this sheer horsepower that you want from a Bluegrass Dreadnought. The other model is a custom dreadnought with the same recipe. Mahogany back and sides and an Adirondack spruce top. This custom dreadnought has fiddleback mahogany and the top is indeed Adirondack spruce. It's played by Graham Curry at Eddie's Guitars and here it is. On over to the West Coast we go, specifically Santa Cruz, California, to visit Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Richard Hoover and crew truly make an astounding bluegrass dreadnought. I've played quite a few of their models, and I had a hard time picking out the singular one that made me believe they make Martin guitars better than Martin guitars. But before we get to that model, let's hear from Richard Hoover about why they don't simply build to dimensions, but rather build to frequency and tap tone when it comes to the top of an acoustic guitar. This is full of guitar geek goodness. Check this out. His top will be a dimension, not to a size, but to a deflection and to a frequency. And I ride wherever the wind. Here's a good illustration of a before and after. Um, we didn't pre-shape these, and I'll show you an after in a second, uh, because we want to manipulate these to do two things. One is to work with the graphic equalization, how much bass versus treble do we want in this guitar. Uh, that bluegrass guitar, we'd want a big bass, but for classical or jazz or our modern finger style, we'd like the EQ much more even, bass, treble, and mid-range, and let the artist decide. 
As I mentioned before, I had a hard time picking out a singular Santa Cruz guitar that exemplified how powerful their bluegrass dreadnoughts are. They really make so many dandies. You've got the 1934 Dreadnought that is super powerful, dry, crispy, woody, just an awesome bluegrass Dreadnought. You've got the Brad Paisley Signature model that has this wonderful boom and this wonderful blossom when it comes to tone. But the one I chose that made me believe that Santa Cruz Guitar Company makes a bluegrass Dreadnought better than Martin Guitars is the Tony Rice model. Now, this may come as no surprise, but this guitar truly has it all. Uh, it comes standard Indian rosewood back and sides, European spruce top, an enlarged sound hole, and wow, this guitar, obviously the name attached to it, conjures up images of bluegrass. But if you didn't know it was the Tony Rice model and you simply heard this guitar, you would be blown away. Think about that guy in the Maxell tape commercial where he's sitting on the couch and he just his hair gets blown back and his skin's flapping because it's so powerful. That is the Tony Rice model from Santa Cruz Guitars. And lucky enough for you, you're gonna get to hear it in the hands of a truly exceptional player. Alan Shad, a two-time national flat picking contest winner, is playing this guitar at Sound Pure Studios. And I'm going to say this, bust out the headphones again, because this guitar truly has it all. It's robust, it's huge, and it has this wonderful projection. Here it is. Let's now head on up the coast to Sisters, Oregon and visit, yes, you guessed it, Thompson Guitars. In my opinion, Thompson Guitars is one of the leading manufacturers of a truly powerful, truly amazing, truly tone-filled bluegrass dreadnought. One that, in my opinion, is better than a newly made Martin bluegrass dreadnought. Of course, I'm biased. I own a Thompson, but there's been so much thought and planning into making a bluegrass dreadnought that rivals a golden era bluegrass dreadnought from Martin Guitars that you simply have to hear the story from Preston Thompson himself. Now, Preston Thompson has since passed, but this incredible video was captured of him describing how he modeled their dreadnought after one of Charles Sautel's prized golden era vintage Martin dreadnoughts. Here it is. Back in the 80s, when I knew Charles and Charles would come up to the shop in, in, uh, in Bend, Oregon. Um, he made several trips and he'd bring his 37 D28 and his uh, D18s, he had a 35 and a 36. And we'd make patterns after them and uh, study them. Their basic 18 style dreadnought is the one that made me a believer in Thompson guitars. It made me a believer that there are companies out there that build Martin guitars better than Martin guitars. Now, I'm not throwing shade at Martin guitars, but let's be realistic. There are a ton of really good guitar makers right now. And some of those guitar makers make exceptional bluegrass dreadnoughts. Thompson guitars, to me, is at the top of the list. Wow, and like I said, their 18 style basic dreadnought, mahogany back and sides, Adirondack spruce top, is the one. It is the one. <music> for the dreadnought floodgates to open? Because this is where I ask you what your favorite non-Martin bluegrass dreadnought is. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I only listed six here, and it was really hard to whittle my list down to just these six. So I kind of based it on what would be available for guitar geeks en mass to play at a local music shop. But I know there's some other hidden bluegrass dreadnought brands out there that I simply need to be aware of. And if I need to be aware of them, well then your fellow guitar geeks need to be aware of them well. So again, in the comments below, let me know your favorite non-Martin bluegrass dreadnought. How often have you heard me say that focus and fun within your guitar journey equals daily consistent progress? You probably heard me say it quite a bit because I say it at the end of every single Acoustic Tuesday episode. That recipe is that important. We need to be reminded of it, well, on a daily basis. But just for a second, let's think of the opposite. What's the opposite of focus? Well, flailing or dabbling. What's the opposite of fun? Frustration. 
What's the opposite of progress? Well, lack of progress and feeling like you're going nowhere. Unfortunately, that lack of progress is playing out in so many Guitar Geek's guitar journeys. And here's how it manifests. You don't have any focus when you sit down. So you sit down and you kind of dabble, click around from lesson to lesson, not really working on any specific thing. And it makes you feel like, well, you played guitar, but you really didn't get anywhere. What does that do for you? Well, it leads you to frustration. It leads you to not having any fun with your instrument because likely you're sitting down and playing the same five things you've played for the last year, or maybe in some cases, five years. And that right there is the definition of lack of progress. If you're still playing the same exact thing that you've been playing since you started the guitar, and that's the only thing you're playing, you'll never get better. And as I mentioned, the sad reality is, is that very scenario is playing out in so many Guitar Geek's guitar journeys. And it is my personal mission to stop that. In fact, you're about to meet Phil B from Mesa, Arizona, who sits down with the guitar, he has specific direction, He's taking the pressure off of himself and bringing the pleasure back to playing his guitar. And he's actually, well, he's having fun and he's bringing that focus and he is progressing. He just celebrated his first year with Tony's Acoustic Challenge. And here's what he has to say in retrospect of his first year. This past weekend was my one year anniversary. I had played a little before, learning some basic chords and simple melodies and a few songs, trying to understand a little about the guitar but really didn't have any direction, routine, or a plan to develop any particular skills. I started out joining TAC as many others, not quite sure what it was about. This program has given me a specific direction and with the daily lessons has helped with consistency and working on skills in specific areas, finger picking, flat picking, chords, scales, etc. Working on these has helped me to achieve the goal to play full songs better. The forums, and thus the community, has been great as I have been able to submit some of my playing without fear of humiliation and rejection. Thanks to all of you who have listened to the songs I have played in which I have also sung. I use that term loosely as I am not a singer, but being able to play and sing together has also helped me develop. This last year has been a challenge to all, and we have had some particularly hard knocks in our family, but this program has given me a framework to continue, even when I have not had much time. I have found that a little time each day keeps the ball rolling, and I have no schedule to meet on this except my own. No pressure, which I have tended to put on myself, but more pleasure in the process. This next year, I want to continue as I have, improving in the challenges as they come up again, take more of the skill lessons, and become more confident in playing. I want to apply what I'm learning both mentally and with my fingers as they gain more fluidity, consistency, and speed to a few new songs along the way. I plan to keep on trucking. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for sharing a firsthand account of how fun and focus within your guitar journey leads to progress. It sounds so simple, and, and it is. Have fun and be focused on something. And if you do that day in and day out, you'll progress just as Phil has done. And what I love about Phil's account here is he's saying, you know, even when I haven't had much time, especially this last year when things have been a little crazy, I'm still progressing because I have fun and I am focusing. So again, thanks so much, Phil, for offering that firsthand account that, you know what? You're digging your guitar journey and that's because of the fun and the focus, which is leading to progress. Now, I wanna continue having fun here and I want us to focus, see what I did there, on a guitar snow from a fellow Acoustic Tuesday viewer. We're gonna head to Midland, Michigan. That dad joke just kinda cracked me up. Sometimes I tie things together in a very dad-like way. And I say that in the most endearing way because uh, I'm a dad, I'm a new dad, and I'm an old dad. I have a, a now nearly 14-year-old and a near one-year-old, and I find myself really refining my dad joke game. But anyways, we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna focus on a guitar snow from Simon Toth, or Toth uh, in Midland, Michigan. And here's what he has in his small yet mighty guitar snow. And this goes to show that, you know what? It's not about the size of your guitar snow. It's about the guitars that you dig, the guitars that you play, and the guitars that you have fun with. Here's what Simon's got. A 2001 PRS Tremonti SE, a 2020 Yamaha AC3R, and a 2020 Taylor GS Mini E. Thank you so much, Simon, for submitting your guitar snow. And if you're sitting there thinking, you know what? It is time to submit my guitar snow. Tony just told me it's not about the size of your guitar snow. It's about the guitars that make you happy. Yes, yes, it is about the guitars that make you happy. Whether you have one or 50, I want you to submit your guitar snow. And all you have to do is follow three simple steps. Step number one, go to AcousticTuesday.store and pick out your favorite guitar snow t-shirt. 
or hoodie or sweatshirt. Once you get that shirt, step number two is to put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And then step number three, please visit AcousticLife.tv, click on the submit link in the top menu and you can upload your picture and share with us what is in your guitar arsenal. Now it is time for your headlines from the acoustic guitar industry. Yes, it's time for acoustic news you can use. And I've got a ton on my list today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and rip through it. Please forgive me if I speed through these things, but I have to tell you, I could not, I couldn't remove any of these things. They are all important and you need to know about every single one of them. That being said, let's get started. <gasps> the first one comes from Will McNichol. Will McNichol is one of my favorite fingerstyle guitarists. He happens to play guitarists. He happens to play Tom Sands guitars and he's the reason why I became interested in Tom Sands guitars in the first place. But anyways, you need to know Will. He's an incredible guitar player. He's an incredible teacher and he happens to be releasing a new album, let me get the date right, on June 28th, 2020. You can pre-order it now right from his website. He has a bunch of different packages from just a straight up digital download to a physical copy with uh, tab notation and all sorts of things. Again, check out his website to get all the details. You can pre-order it from there. And if you need a little sonic sampling, let's go ahead and have a listen right now. I should mention that Will's new album is entitled Miniatures. I do believe I forgot to mention that because I was so excited about telling you when it came out. I forgot to tell you what the name was. Moving on to our next piece of news, and it comes from right here in Bozeman, Montana. It comes from right here in Bozeman, Montana, twofold. Number one, this guitar was produced in Bozeman, Montana. It was made here in Bozeman, and this guitar was reviewed right here in Bozeman from my alma mater, the Acoustic Letter. What guitar is it? It's an Epiphone, FT-110 Frontier. And yes, I said that right. This Epiphone was made in Bozeman, Montana. And I have to tell you, I'm really excited about this because I have long had a lusting, a love affair, whatever the right term is, with the Epiphone Frontier model. I have looked at vintage Epiphone Frontiers probably every day for about two years. Why? Because I saw Phoebe Bridgers play one and I thought, that guitar must be an amazing songwriting tool, so I should own one. Well, vintage ones are pretty darn expensive. Now they are making the Epiphone Frontier here in Bozeman at the Gibson factory, and it is incredible. Why do I say that? Because it sounds awesome. Quentin and Paul from Music Villa sat down and reviewed the Epiphone FT-110 Frontier. It blew my socks off, and it is very high up on my list of guitars that I should probably purchase, but Whitney is not allowing me to if that is a list name. Anyways, let's hear the Epiphone Frontier, newly made in Bozeman, Montana, in action. Our next news nugget comes directly from YouTube and it features an artist that we've actually featured quite a few times on the Acoustic Tuesday show, Sean DeBurka. Incredible modern percussive fingerstyle guitar player, incredible graphic designer, an all around good human being, and just an overall guitar geek. Yes, he's submitted his guitar snow for inclusion on the Acoustic Tuesday show. And now he is at war with another YouTuber, Stevie T. I hope you're aware of Stevie T. My son, Aiden, who's now almost 14, actually turned me on to Stevie T and his videos, and I absolutely love them. I think they're hilarious. Stevie T is a guitar geek, definitely from the electric end of the spectrum, but nonetheless, I just find his videos comedic and enjoyable, uh, put simply. Now, Sean, as I mentioned, is an incredible percussive fingerstyle acoustic guitar player. Stevie T tried to replicate some of Sean's songs. It was a bit of a, a riff challenge, if you will. It's hilarious. Uh, Sean's playing is, is top notch, and Stevie tries to replicate these riffs, these licks, if you will. And I have to say, he does a damn good job, but it just goes to show how intricate Sean's playing is. 
you gotta watch the full video. We're just gonna look at a snippet of it right now because it'll give you kind of the scope of the video and well, it'll give you a reason to watch the full thing because it's, it's pretty awesome. Really? Sean, what did I do? Why? What did I do to you? Subpar at best. Do you like the blues? Because this next album, new album that I'm about to tell you about, charted at the top of the US blues charts. I think it came in at number two. And I think it actually came in at number two on the UK blues charts as well. I don't know if those are hard facts and figures, but I know it charted. And I know that if you like blues, if you like resonator guitars, if you like gritty, swampy blues, you need to check out this next album by David and the Devil. Because it's called King of the Swamp and he uses nearly everything Resonator on this album. It was all recorded at home. It was released back on April 30th, and it is a treat to listen to. No physical copies are available. However, it is available in all the digital outlets, wherever you get your digital music. And to give you a little sonic snack, a little treat, a sonic uh, appetizer, if you will, let's go ahead and have a quick listen to David and the Devil and uh, the promo for his new album, King of the Swamp. I got a guitar story for you. This one comes from Jared Nichols. You can follow him on Instagram, Jared James Nichols, all lowercase, all one word. Anyways, he is a lover of all things Les Paul. He is a total, he's a badass guitar player, plain and simple. I was gonna say incredible, but I think I've said incredible roughly 752 times on today's show. So I'm just gonna say that Jared is just a plain badass. He's an incredible electric guitar player. And just, he's one of those guitar players that lives eats and breathes guitar. He loves all things Les Paul, and this guitar that he just got has quite the story. Let me go ahead and read you this post. As you look at these pictures, um, yeah, this is, this is a story for the ages, a, a guitar geek story for the guitar geek ages and the guitar geek mythology books. Here it is. I feel extremely humbled and honored to share this post. This is one of the first ever Gibson Les Paul models from 1952. It isn't only special because it's one of the first ever, but the fact it has been to hell and back. This guitar survived an EF4 tornado. Yeah, it was in a tornado. On November 17th, 2013, one of the biggest recorded tornadoes tore through Washington, Illinois, killing and destroying everything in its path. This guitar was found in the front yard of a home in the rubble. It has not been touched since. There's still mud on it. The original owner was found. It was her grandpa's guitar who has long passed. And she gave her blessing to my new friend who has kept the guitar since then. I want to thank my new shred brother, at TJ Duckweiler, from the bottom of my heart for hitting me up and gifting me this incredibly special instrument. He sent me a picture of it right here on Instagram and we started chatting. He knew my love of Les Pauls and P90s, of course. We talked the idea of this guitar being risen from the ashes and brought back to its former glory. It is happening. I'm sending this beast to my friend at JW Restoration today to begin the extensive restoration process. Joel is a wizard and a true genius. He'll be taking this project full on, crafting a hand-built Brazilian board neck alongside fixing every other component to take it back to glory. I will only be fixing no refinish. Excited is an understatement. I cannot wait to play my heart out on this Les Paul. By the way, I'm naming her Dorothy. Thanks, TJ. You rule. What a great story. That is full of guitar geek goodness I, on so many levels. And I just want to thank Jared for sharing that and kind of allowing us to, in a way, go on that journey with him. Uh, for somebody that loves Les Pauls, I, I couldn't think of a better person to get that guitar, to restore it, to, to give it the life that 
well, it deserves. I feel like I'm talking about uh, pets here. It's like one of those commercials during the holidays where <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin does the, you know, in the arms of an angel and all the pets are, you know, anyways, sorry. I got one more thing for you today. I'm in a little bit of a goofy mood. Uh, I got one more thing for you today, and it is a funny guitar comic. It's one, again, I found it on Instagram, so let me go ahead and share it with you. It's basically the recipe for uh, the right amount of guitars done in a really funny meme. So here's the recipe for guitar geek happiness. First, we get a guitar. Then we get another guitar. And then we say, no more guitars. But then we find another guitar. So we get two more guitars. Yes, um, I can't think of a better comic, a better news item to uh, end the Acoustic Tuesday show on. So with that, I will conclude the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's go ahead and take a sneak peek and see what's gonna happen next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. And next week, we're gonna talk about practicing with the metronome. I know you're thinking, Tone, how do you go from building Martin guitars better than Martin guitars, which is an exciting topic, to the snooze fest that is the metronome? See, what we're gonna be doing next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show is taking the metronome from snooze fest land and bringing it into exciting land because I'm gonna share with you how to use the metronome in a fun way so that you can actually get better timing and ultimately just have fun with the metronome. It's a necessary tool, so why not have fun with it? Yes, that's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday here at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on YouTube. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, your guitar progress, your guitar success is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Because remember, fun and focus in your guitar journey equals consistent and daily progress, which is like the guitar geek gift that keeps on giving. Thank you again for joining me today, and I can't wait to see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers to you, guitar geek.